it is my voice that George Lucas eventually decided would be the voice of C-3PO. I hate this. I hate space travel. <laughs> Thank you very much for giving me some time today at this very important time of the year, and, and in fact, important time of the galaxy, really. It's the 45th anniversary of the first Star Wars film ever, 1977. Wow. The first shoot was out in the desert in Tunisia, pretending to be Tatooine, and um, the weather was against us. You know, there's a lot of sand everywhere. It rained for the first time in 30 years, I think. The army <laughs> had to come in, the Tunisian army had to come and pull some of our vehicles out of the mud and so on. And there was Mark Hamill and myself and Sir Alec. And we were saying lines that you really had to grit your teeth. And uh, it was all very weird. <laughs> and I was in a golf suit, which was weird on weird. And I had uh, not the most comfortable experience. And as a group, um, we kind of felt George Lucas's script was uh, left a bit to the uh, yes. Um, how wrong were we? All these years later, and it is around the world, it's, it's totally viral. I love it. I imagine uh, we all despised it at the time. My agent had called with the low budget science fiction film, uh, part of a robot. Yeah. Uh, and I said, no, she, she kind of smacked me around a bit. So I ended up meeting him. And actually, in one of the color plates in the book is a picture uh, called a concept painting that Ralph Macquarie painted. And that painting literally changed my life because something about the character he'd, he'd drawn uh, appealed to me. And then I read the script and I, I liked 3PO and nothing to do with me. I hadn't written it, George and his colleagues had. And so the next day I went back and kind of we talked a bit more. <laughs> this time I was a bit more, I don't know, nervous because first time I didn't care. Great way to do an interview, mm. actually, you know, very relaxed, second time, not so much. And eventually, I've told the story many times, I said, you know, please, may I play the part? And George went, sure. And that was it. So six months later, having spent that time making the costume, there I was in the desert, regretting it. <laughs> I didn't tell my friends what I was doing. I'd say I was kind of in this funny film. But I didn't really tell it because I was embarrassed. They all had gone into real jobs at the Royal Shakespeare Company or the National Theatre. And here was I prattling around, you know, being silly. <laughs> Boy, you know, did I felt silly when it opened. I hadn't realised. Wow. And then, of course, it opened with no, with no hurrah at all. They didn't have any money to, to pay for advertising. But the audience took it over. I can actually walk normally in the suit, but it doesn't look very interesting, it doesn't look kind of robotic, you know. Um, certainly it, it, it restricts hugely, and the visual of the suit, uh, sculpted by uh, an artist called Liz Moore, um, the face, uh, and I will remind you uh, as, uh, as I speak, this beautiful face um, allows, it a totally static mask, but you know, I'd kind of learned at drama school how to use the rest of your body to create uh, emotion on a blank mask and so on. That was very useful. Um, so the physicality was partly, uh, you know, I had to work out what to do in each scene. You couldn't make it up because you knock things over because you couldn't see anything uh, like that. Um, yeah, it was a combination of things. And um, nobody had ever seen a character like him before. So, you know, that helped. Remember. The force will be with you, always. <laughs>